Why do we work hard to solve small problems? Why do we reinvent ourselves and our clients over and over? And why are we giving away marketing strategy for free? It's time to bring home bigger paychecks. It's time to create the lifestyle we deserve and to make a greater impact. This is the Fractional CMO Show, and I'm Casey Stanton. Join me as we explore this growing industry and learn to solve bigger problems. Hey, it's Casey here, and welcome back to another episode of the Fractional CMO Show. In this episode, I'm going to introduce you to a gal on our team named Hannah, and I'm going to share with you kind of how she works to support our members and how uh, some of our members have been incredibly successful and her take on those members um, when she first met them. I'm excited about this because Hannah is our kind of our front line of defense to make sure that we're actually able to help the people that reach out to us. And she's talked to a number of folks. I mean, every week her calendar is stacked up with folks who uh, are eager to join the CMOX Accelerator. And um, she she can tell pretty quickly if we can help someone and if they'd be a good fit for us. Uh, so with that, Hannah, welcome. Excited to have you here. All right. Thank you so much for the introduction, Casey. I really appreciate that. Um, I am super excited to be here. I know that I've seen a lot of people in our Facebook group. Um, I've talked to a lot of people that have come our way. So, hi, it's nice to meet you if I haven't officially spoken with you yet. Awesome. Love it, Hannah. And just tell everyone, where are you from? So, I am actually from London, Kentucky, a um, little small town in the foothills of Appalachia. Um, just been making my way out west, and now I'm in Oregon. Love it. I love watching you travel um, and just kind of be you, right? That's like, it's one of my favorite things about you is that you're kind of unapologetically Hannah. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. And I and I think that that's kind of a core tenet that we have here at CMOX, which is if you are yourself, you know, this idea that you have your strategic self um, and then you have your true self and our strategic self is this person that we become to kind of get the things that we need in life. If you can kind of remerge that strategic self back to that true self and really be yourself, um, mm-hmm. there's just ease and fun. Uh, before you joined CMOX, before you kind of had this um, kind of, you know, a job where, where, where this was kind of the core belief, um, what was it like and how is it different kind of living in that core belief? Definitely. Um, I never really felt like I had a home at work. Um I feel like I've, of course, been able to get along well enough to fit in, make friends, do my job, but I've never really felt at home like, yes, this is where I want to be. And by being able to join CMOX, I really feel like I found a home. Um, You all understand me and not just like as a person, but as a worker, right? So you all know how I operate. You know where I excel and where I fall short. And I really feel understood, which makes me flourish. Um, that's the best part about this job. Yeah, I, I love it. And 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 uh, I, the reason I'm bringing this up is like, as a CMO, this is what we want to build in our teams, right? You want to find people who are a great culture fit, and then you want to give them the opportunity to really be themselves and excel in their role. Um, and this is just a tenet that we believe through and through. Um, I personally believe this with my accountant, right? With the people who do my taxes, <laughs> with our financial analysts, with everyone in, on our team. Uh, in our personal life, um, our nanny, like, I I think that this core belief of uh, be yourself and find the place that's a right fit for you, I think is just great. So, um, okay, uh, enough about that. Hannah, Mm -hmm. our our process to get folks into the CMOX Accelerator is reasonably straightforward. If someone's Mm -hmm. interested, maybe they listen to this podcast, maybe they get a copy of my book, The Fractional CMO Method, um, maybe they Google us, whatever it is, they oftentimes end up on your calendar or one of your colleagues' calendar, and you're that front line of defense. And that call, um, what what's the purpose of that call? So it's definitely just a get-to-know-you call. So I want to make you feel comfortable, but I also want to ask you some questions just to figure out if we're going to be a good fit or not. Um, our accelerator, it's it's really made up of some really great marketers. And we just want to make sure that if you join us, you're going to feel right at home. So that's really what that call is about. Yeah, love it. So you're going to ask, you know, when someone joins, you ask them just kind of basic questions to get an understanding of who they are. Is that right? Mm -hmm, Exactly. And, you know, what's their marketing background? How long long have they been doing this? Um, Just stuff like that. And 
most importantly, what are you looking for in order to become a fractional CMO? What tools or resources? I love it. Um, so is it super high pressure? Do you like force people to pull their wallet out right then on the call? <laughs> no, that is definitely not the point. I, I would prefer that they don't. Um, this is totally just a touch base. Let's get to know each other. Do you know, do you like us? Do you feel like you would be comfortable with us? So Yeah, I love it. Um you've you've met most of the folks who have joined the accelerator, I say most because uh, we've hired someone else um, to kind of support you in the same role. Um, mm -hmm. So now some of the calls go to you, some of the calls go to them. Um, but there was someone that you mentioned to me as we prep for this call uh, who got into the mental health space as a fractional CMO. Why did that stand out to you? Mm -hmm. Well, she was such a paradigm shifter. Like she was from Chicago. Well, she is from Chicago. Um, and like you said, her niche is in mental health clinics and substance recovery programs. And honestly, she is out there doing the work that needs to be done. That is so important. Um, I know you and your background, you work with paradigm shifting businesses as well. That's a big tenant in your core marketing beliefs. And just to see those people like, like this lady, right, come to us and find a home with us really means that we're carrying out our vision and your vision. So I love it. I love it. And, and I think this goes back to this idea that if you want to have impact in the world, like you can, you can just go, let's say work for a nonprofit and you can go volunteer and you can donate money and all that kind of stuff. And I think all of those things are important, worthwhile. Um, I donate, I donate to political campaigns. I donate locally. I, I think that that's an important thing to do. And you can do a whole lot of good as a fractional CMO. Mm -hmm. you, you can get into a business that's doing good and maybe reached uh, a ceiling of complexity and they need someone to help push them beyond that. And I think the mental health space is, is, is incredibly important. If, if you consider what's happened to the, you know, the world, the United States, mm -hmm. um, wherever you're at as a result of COVID, as we move into, you know, what a lot of folks are predicting is going to be just a worsening recession. We're seeing massive layoffs in big tech. We're seeing more layoffs right now. There's like 120,000 layoffs in big tech. Um, and we saw about 100,000 in the 2008 crisis. So, I, I mean, like, it's going to be a, a, you know, a tough time. Um, the the market shifting. Companies, there are companies that will grow. But one thing that's going to be, become very clear is that people are going to be suffering. And the way that you help them with suffering is with their mental health. And mental health treatment is just, I think, going to, explode. Mm -hmm. And to be able to get in on a business that's working in mental health so that they can grow uh, profitably, sure, but grow and help more people, I think is, um, it's, it's just like a really noble thing to do. Mm -hmm. you know, you're doing more supporting that organization than you are donating, you know, a monthly donation to that same organization, right? A great fractional CMO can, can do some incredible stuff. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you brought up a really interesting point. You were talking about, you know, the, the mass of tech layoffs happening right now. Um, so in the past two weeks, I have actually seen such an influx of people that I talked to who were recently laid off or recently mm. left like a cushy corporate position. Um, these people are like super qualified. They would be great members and they are more interested in becoming a fractional CMO now than ever because they really see the need to become your own boss, do your own thing. And, you know, your work is not dependent on being laid off or being fired. Oh, um, that's such a big deal. Like to think that a full-time employee is one call away from getting fired. Mm -hmm. Like, and uh, I, I remember talking to um, um, uh, a CMO, a former CMO who had gotten laid off. He said that he had crushed all of his annual targets the year previous. Like didn't just hit them, but like really crushed them surpassed mm -hmm. them and the company just shifted directions and he lost his job and then he found himself you know maybe overcompensated previously and he couldn't find um a solution so he was left just kind of drifting saying who will pick me up i'm really great at what i do oof super scary i think um mm -hmm. i mean last i chatted with him he was still kind of searching for his next gig uh it's it's uh it's a tough labor market, especially with all mm -hmm. these layoffs. You're just going to see um, more qualified people that are available for work. So how mm -hmm. do you compete against that? Uh, mm -hmm. I think you bring up a good point. All right. Um, you had another call with, with a gentleman. Um, 
And I remember you had a call with him. And every time that you have a call with someone, you always uh, send me a note uh, via Slack and just kind of give me a status update on them just so I can kind of mm-hmm. keep a pulse on things. And I remember this guy, you were super excited about him. Mm-hmm. What were you so excited about? Okay. So this gentleman, he was so hungry. Like he hopped on the call with me. He hopped on in the first five minutes. He said, I know I want to join. I'm ready. He tried to give me his credit card on the phone. And I'm like, sir, I'm not the person to give that to, but (laughs) let's get you on the next call. He joined that same day. He joined like four hours after talking to me. And since he joined, he has done super, super well as a fractional CMO. Um, he had, he really wanted to join because he had a client on the line that he, he needed our framework for, and he got the framework, he was able to serve them and he's landed a lot more clients since then. So because he was so hungry, he has just excelled as a fractional CMO. Oh, I love that. And, um, I, I think that this happens, uh, you know, with some frequency, which is, uh, people are aware of CMOX and they're like, oh, this sounds right. Like, yeah, I believe kind of the core belief that being a fractional CMO puts me in the driver's seat. And um, I like that I can get paid uh, 50, 60, 70% of what I used to get paid, but now take on multiple clients that pay me that. They can see it as a way to double their income and work less, um, but they're not willing to make the jump right away. They're just trying to get mm-hmm. everything aligned for themselves, which I mean, makes sense. I, I, I get it. You know, there's, there's risk involved in jumping onto something new. Uh, so then they come to us with this urgency, uh, which is, I've got a client. They're going to say yes to me. I have a call with them in three hours. I need you guys. Can I join? Mm-hmm. Um, and those people, they move quickly. And I think this is just kind of a, a a truism in all things. People who make decisions quickly and are committed to those decisions tend to be the ones that get the best result. Like mm-hmm. They know when they're in and they're going to go and do whatever it takes to get the result that they're after. Do you find that to be true too? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, If you're not super hungry, then it's a lot harder to put in the effort that it takes to be successful. So you got to come into this with a full appetite. Yeah. 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 That's, that's for sure. And I think that that guy, last I chatted, I think he's stacking. I mean, he's over 30,000 a month as a fractional CMO. So. Oh yeah. I have no doubt. Um, he, he's an awesome gentleman. I love talking to him. He just, he is going to do well no matter what he does, but he's going to be a great fractional CMO. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. And, and to that, to that point, it's like, there is just an inherent commitment that he came in with. He seems like the kind of person who um, n- just like knows when to do something. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe this sounds weird, but like, I'm always kind of keeping a mental checklist of the people that are on my like apocalypse squad. <laughs> you know, these are the people that I would be like, Hey, like the world's ending, like <laughs> let's do this together. And like, mm-hmm. I think, I think he'd be on it. You know, he seems like the kind of guy who gets shit done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really good way a, to put that. There was a third person, um, uh, that you mentioned before the call here that, that had a, had a big family desire. Um, mm-hmm. Just wanted to be with his family. Tell me about that process. Mm-hmm. So he came to us and he was also pretty certain that he wanted to join right off the get-go. Um, so he was hungry, but it was less about himself. And it was more about being able to spend time with his young family. Um, he had little children, like little toddlers. And his wife had her own business. She was a um, She owned a winery. And so he really wanted to be present with that, be present with his wife and his children and be there while they grow up and watch their most formative years. So that was the big draw to becoming a fractional CMO was so he could control his own schedule, be his own boss and work as little or as much as he wanted, work whenever he wanted. And so since he joined, he's been able to do that. And he's also been pretty successful. Um, He just closed, what, a 7K per month client? Yeah, I think it was something like that. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, which was huge, right? I mean, that was doubling his income uh, and working, I, I don't know, a third of what he worked on the other, mm-hmm. you know, uh, half his income, 30 hours a week, the other half, 10 hours a week. It's pretty crazy. Uh, and mm-hmm. he could get more of those 10 hour week clients. And I think, um, I think just with a little more self-confidence, he'll be able to charge more because I think his outcomes that he generates for his clients are really big. Mm-hmm. Definitely. He, he is a little bit young. Um, mm-hmm. So that's probably by the lack of confidence, but he sure. will grow into his shoes. Oh yeah. Without question. Good horse to bet on. 
I, I think this family thing, I mean, to me, that rings really true. Uh, mm-hmm. As we record this, I'm one week away from my daughter's due date. Um, okay. As in my wife will have a baby and it's a baby girl. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. And there's like so much space and excitement for me to have that kid, right? I serve as a fractional CMO. And like my clients are like excited for me. They're not saying like, oh, we're not going to pay you when you take paternity leave. Like they're going to pay me and they're going to be excited for me and they appreciate me. Um, and I have all that space to do it. it. It's, it's, it's really kind of an unbelievable opportunity. If I look at, um, you know, when I worked back at the marketing agency, it would have been, oh, well, you're out. Well, what's going to happen to all your clients? Can you work like nights? Can you work weekends? You know, can you squeeze this in? Can we call you? Can you just join like half the meetings? Can you join the meetings, but just be on mute for them? <laughs> You know, and the answer um, right now is just absolutely not. I, I find, uh, you know, we have a son right now and uh, soon to be a daughter, and with my son, I just can't believe how fast these precious moments disappeared. The like him falling asleep in my arms, you know, getting um, uh, nap trapped. You know, when he falls asleep on me and and I can't move. <laughs> That doesn't happen. I'm lucky to get my toddler to lay on me for you know more than three seconds at a time. So I'm going to go soak it all up and I can do that while focusing on solving bigger problems and delegating everything except leadership and really supporting my clients and growing. So uh, our members are doing that. I think, I think the lifestyle of having a family is, is awesome. There was one thing that you mentioned though, um, that you wanted to talk about here, which is this idea that some folks have when they talk to you, which is, Hey Hannah, like this all sounds great, but I just want leads. Can you tell me, what's wrong with just wanting leads? Mm -hmm, Definitely. Um, This is something that I really feel like needs addressed. So whenever I talk to somebody and they're like, hey, your framework's cool. Everything that you all do is awesome. But really what I just want is leads. It tells me that they're not really committed to the idea of becoming a fractional CMO. Um, They don't actually want to take control of their lives. It's They want to take the easy route. And I don't mean to say that and come across harsh. Um, it's just, it's so true though, right? Um, they are not willing to actually invest in themselves. Um, they're willing to invest in leads, but not in taking their own chance at starting their own business. So that's just my take on it. Yeah. And I think it's a good point. I, I mean, there's nothing wrong that someone that says, hey, I just, I'm interested in leads, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if there's a lifestyle um, where they can just like maybe get a couple clients here and there um, from the goodwill of a lead provider, maybe they pay for those leads. Like, I mean, I guess that's, I th- I, I'm not going to tell them that that's a bad move, but I'll tell you that you have no control over your pipeline when you do that. Mm-hmm. You have no control over you being the player in the market. Um, that's what, kind of what commoditized service providers do. So what I mean by that is like, I look at plumbers. If I needed a plumber, it's a commodity. Like the plumber that I'll hire is the one that like doesn't have a garbage website, answers the phone and I I, I mean, it shows up. Like that's mm-hmm. kind of the bar for hiring a plumber. And it's a commodity. And if you just want leads, you're going to just like, be selling yourself as a commodity. Hey, I'm just a fractional CMO. There's plenty of others, but I'm the one that's in front of you. Mm-hmm. There's no real desire to work with you if you just want leads. You're not committed, so you're going to get clients that aren't committed. You're going to get clients that are going to want a marketing strategy from you, and then you're going to be all excited to lead that strategy once you build it, and then they're going to say, eh, eh I don't know. I don't. We're not really committed to building this out. We don't really have the budget for it. Um, thanks for the strategy or they'll delay the second half of the payment or whatever. There's something that happens when someone commits to something and I don't care what you commit to. You could commit to running a marathon. You could commit to climbing Mount Everest. Um, you could commit to being a fractional CMO. You could commit to writing a book, but if you commit it to it, really commit to it and you socialize your commitment and you kind of enroll those around you, the, the universe kind of shows up at your doorstep to help you. That that's been my experience. Um, These opportunities don't fall into your lap unless you're the committed person. Because who would take a risk on you if you weren't committed? Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's these wishy-washy marketers who are like, I was thinking about being a fractional CMO, but I'll build your website for two grand. You, you know, that those things are just at odds with one another and it devalues the marketer. So mm -hmm. if you want just leads, great. Go build up local relationships and see if you can get just leads. If you want to be an in-demand fractional CMO with a pipeline where you're constantly exchanging clients that you kind of fell out of love with, with clients that you do love and having long-term relationships where you're paid handsomely, three, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month or more, you can't do that by just kind of hoping that someone's going to hand leads to you. You got to take the world, you know, the, by by the horns and 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 just like get what you want. And you do that by building out your pipeline, building out your authority, um, keeping those leads warm mm -hmm. because not everyone's ready to make a buying decision today. And then continually showing them your expertise. And you know that's part of what we've got inside the accelerator, which is like, how do you attract and convert clients? And then we have a whole kind of massive um, uh, process and framework all around. How do you serve those clients then? How do you do quarterly planning and annual planning? And how do you handle sprints? And how do you hire? And how do you fire? And um, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but for many, it's the attract part. And to just want leads is not to attract. To just want leads is to ask for a commoditized transaction. And I just think it's um, it's just a surefire way to just kind of always be playing in the minor leagues. You'll never get the outcomes that you want if if you just let other people dictate your future. That's my take on it. Mm -hmm. Such a good point. Uh, you said that so well. Yeah, thanks. And and um, one of the things that I wanted to get out of this podcast episode is if anyone listens to it, they're going to hear from Hannah and they're going to be like, maybe, you know, you're always going to get on what might feel like a sales call, which with you is totally not a sales call. Um, but they might kind of get... Uh, you know, the feelings that you get when you get on a sales call, you feel like you're going to get pressured into something. And I just mm -hmm. love that your take on all of this stuff, Hannah, is just kind of chilled out, kind of relaxed. And you ask a couple of great questions to make sure um, we can actually help them. I think it's a, I think it's a great process. So thanks. Thanks for running that. Yeah, no problem. Listen, y'all, I'm from Kentucky. I've, I am a Southern girl, so I take it easy. Do not worry about that. <laughs> I love that about you. All right, Hannah. Well, thanks for jumping on. Um, and if anyone wants to schedule a call with Hannah or one of the other uh, folks on our team that support in this role, which we call a triage call, um, you can book a call at cmox.co slash call. Again, it's like a 20-minute, super low pressure, no pressure call just to see if we're a good fit for you. You might hop on with Hannah. You might hop on with another one uh, of our folks in that role. And um, you know the process is as we laid out. So if this sounds interesting, if you want to build a practice to bring in an extra you know, three, five, ten thousand dollars a month on the side as a full time employee. Um, you can do that. Or maybe you want to go all in and you want to build a thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar a month fractional CMO practice. You can do that too. Uh, it kind of depends on on what you want and where you are in your life and and what the season is. Uh, if you've got a bunch of babies coming and um, <laughs> you want to kind of scale back on your work for a bit, you can do that. Um, if uh, we've got one member, she mentioned recently that um, all her kids are out of the house. She's got an empty nest. So she's like, I'm in. I got, I got nothing else to do right now except make a whole lot of money. So she's got a different energy than someone uh, who's just kind of scaling back a little bit and looking to make good money, but you know, not put in all those hours. So they kind of limit um, some of their income potential, which is, which is great for the season. So um, wherever you're at, if it sounds like we can help you, we'd love to chat with you. Book a call at cmox.co slash call. Thanks for jumping on, Hannah. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Casey. All right. Take care. Thank you for joining us for today's show. For more information and episodes, visit our site at fractionalcmoshow.com. Go ahead and punch that like and subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. It means a lot, at least to my mom.